that the start is absolutely key here. Last year, you remember that Heather Omega led for two laps after having a cracker of a start. And for the rest of the riders here on the front row, they all know that Dolby Forest, despite the start loop that we're going to see now of 2.4 kilometers, it's a very, uh, track very high in single track content. So it's very important to be up the front early on. So the big news here today, as I just mentioned, Irena Kalentieva, the 2009 world champion and ranked uh, in the top four. She's top three, actually, third in the world in the World Cup rankings, uh, not here today, the Russian unable to get her visa processed between South Africa and this event. So there's the replay to start, a good start there also by uh, Marie Ellen Pramont for the Maxis Rocky Mountain team. Uh, she also looking for a podium here today after a very strong result in South Africa where she finished, I believe it was ninth place. So here we see the riders taking off the yellow number plate there for the leading team, that specialized Lenny Byberg there, plate number five in the center, having a quick look over her left shoulder to see who else is there. Elizabeth Ursel there in the Red Bull helmet in getting caught up in some traffic. Plate number 12 there, Gunrita Dala having her best results since having a baby back at the uh, beginning of 2009. She had a 12th in uh, South Africa and uh, she's now finding herself much closer to the front of the grid like the old days. So we can see that the women's field of 83 riders are headed off now on the start loop. We'll pick them up again when they come through the start finish and uh, that's just after 2.4 kilometers of riding and then shortly after them they'll start the under 23 women who once again will be on course but behind the elite women during this race. And uh, so the big story there, as I mentioned, Irena Kalentieva. For the viewers joining us from uh, the USA, coming up to 6 o'clock in the morning there on the East Coast, and uh, even earlier if you're watching from the West Coast, uh, and also to all of our friends in Europe, of course, we're running one hour later for you guys because we're running on UK time here. It's coming up to quarter to 11 or 10 to 11 on the UK, and uh, that means it's 10 to 12 on the mainland of Europe CET. So we have the men's race coming up at our time and that will be a little bit later on around about 2 o'clock and uh, we will of course bring you that live on Freecaster. Here we are in Yorkshire. It's pretty difficult conditions today for the uh, mechanics to choose the tyres. We don't know whether it's going to rain or not. The, the best way to describe the conditions outside right now are blustery. It is very, very chilly, about 13 degrees for this time of the year, and very strong winds, with the winds expected to hit about 45 miles an hour, so well over uh, 70 kilometres an hour. Uh, a bit later on today and uh, there's quite a few you can see the trees now blowing in the background quite a few open sections on this course so normally a windy day may not have a major impact on a field but on this course where there's some open roads like the Con contour road uh, it could play a role in today's race 
the, uh, the wind's expected to get up to 70 miles an hour tonight and tomorrow morning, so we'll miss those, but today it will be very blustery. And here we can see the riders coming through, and this is over the little bridge coming back in towards the start-finish arena. And uh, there's our lead moto. A lot of great work done on this course by the organisers and uh, really popular with a lot of the riders, a lot of fun stuff. It's a fast track. It had uh, a very fast result last year uh, with uh, around about 18... Point, yeah, 18.9 kilometers an hour was the winner's race uh, average speed for Arena Calenti over last year. And for the men, it was over 22k an hour, making it the fastest race of the last two years. So it is a fast track. It's got some man-made obstacles, and uh, it's got this great gully section. Um, and uh, that's, that's coming up a little bit later, which even during the dry conditions of yesterday was still wet because it's very shadowed and it also gets a lot of seepage from the, uh, the banks alongside it. As we see, a field of 83 riders. Uh, also of note in here is uh, world champion Tracy Mosley racing her first cross-country World Cup after she finished seventh in the uh, sprint eliminator in downtown the other night. And uh, she started on the back of the grid in, I think it was plate number 100 and, uh, let's see, 87 riders were listed for the start. Tracy had plate number 87. So in the end, 83 riders took to the line and uh, Tracy trying to chase some World Cup points in cross country. Here are our leaders, Lenny Byberg coming across the line with yellow number plate, the third place rider there is her teammate, Ren Chen Wan. And interesting, Ren Chen Wan winning in South Africa. She's only ever won one race a year, and all of them happen to be round one and or round two. So she has a strong start to the season, but quite a few of the riders out there are wondering whether she can maintain this uh, maintain this sort of pace throughout the season. There goes Gunrita Dalat through in sixth place. Well, that's the closest she's been to a podium in two years, and she goes through now in sixth, followed by Julie Bresset, the under-23 rider. So this is the start loop, as I mentioned before, 2.4 kilometers. Lene Byberg leading it through, and we can see the rest of the field coming through now, all in close proximity to one another. Alexander Engen going through there for Sweden, had a good ride in the sprint el eliminated downtown here in uh, Pickering. And Heather Omega not having a great start. She's in uh, position 31, Katie Compton going through as well, in about the same place. Mary McConaughey a bit further back than she'd like to be in 42. And uh, we can see Elizabeth Ursel's sister going through, a teammate in about position 48. Uh, Alexandra Sin, it looks like there, Amanda Sin going through from Canada. So quite a few riders. As I mentioned before, just keep an eye on uh, Annika Burton. And uh, there's Annika Burton going through in position 65. And that's our four-cross leader in the World Cup. And we'll look for, my, looks like Maya Wachowska, a long way down there. Oh, no, this is a repeat of the positions going through now. They're scrolling through the positions once again. So pick up for you the exact top 10. And remember, you can watch this on UCI Live Timing as well if you want to see the gaps further down the field. But Maya Voschowska going through in fifth place, our reigning world champion, and Gunrita Dala, the Olympic gold medalist, going through in sixth. Julie Brissett in seventh. Sabine Spitz, the Beijing Olympic gold medalist, going through in eighth. And Catherine Pendrel going through in ninth. And she was telling me before the start of the race that the start was absolutely key for a good result here today. Emily Batty, who had a great result here last year in 15th, is now up in 10th. And Annie Last, the other under-23 rider, now taking it up to Julie Brissett, sitting in 11th place. And she's only, looks like, three seconds behind Brissett, so maybe she's targeting her. Now, this is the first of the A and B line sections of the course. On, the, on our right-hand side is the more technical section, and the longer side on the left-hand side is the B line. There's a great little section of the track. Before this, they do the contour road, a quite open, windy section for them today. And uh, that road's about 400 metres long. It's got a couple of little bus stops and tricky little bits that we won't be able to see here on film. But then they head into this section, and this is bringing them up towards Warrigil, which is where they go into the canyon, and it's pretty exciting stuff through there. And, of course, we've got the Medusa section, which is about eight switchbacks coming down the hill as well. Steep climb around the back. I'm not sure if we'll pick up all of these positions for you, uh, but there is quite a lot of stuff on this course, a little bit for everybody. Uh, it is the kind of course that will hold itself up well to uh, to rain if it rains today. Perhaps after a week of rain, it'd be pretty terrible. But you can see the hard pack here with the rock base. It is a very, very stable track indeed. So we have a total of uh, five laps for the women after the start loop. And uh, lots and lots of fans. There's actually a lot more to see out on the track than there is in the start finish. So there were many fans here this morning enjoying the tech area and uh, seeing all of their, their star athletes warming.